Now, at this time of the year, many newsrooms run a roundup of the past 12 months. Well, tonight we have a very different roundup, looking back at an extraordinary career spanning more than four decades. John, we know you didn't want us to make a fuss, but we couldn't let you leave without a look back at some of your work, most of it, of course, here at Channel 4 News, a programme John has presented since 1989. He's travelled the world covering some of the biggest stories and interviewing some of the most extraordinary people. So here is just a flavour, peppered throughout by some of John's own reflections from interviews. We give you our very own John Snow. Good evening. The Environment Secretary, Mr Crossland, said today that rate increases next year should be substantially less than they have been this year. <laughs> I came to ITN from radio, from commercial radio. I had never been trained for anything. I still haven't been. We came of age just as pictures came of age. I, I really wanted to travel. I wanted to get to some of these places. But this is the entire rotor assembly of one of the American helicopters that were involved in the rescue attempt. Good evening from Berlin. Good evening from Gom, where we are live. Good evening from Port-au-Prince Airport. Two men battling for the responsibility of occupying this, the Oval Office, as the next President of the United States. Good evening from Sendai in northern Japan. Good evening from Sri Lanka. Good evening from Staines. After the break, we'll be back here, live, here in the Highlands of Scotland. I'm John Snow. I'm in Greenland. I see myself as an informant. That's my job. Tell the truth. See where it takes us. Twenty empty chairs. We did invite every one of the Conservative candidates in those 20 constituencies to be interviewed today. 17 of them are now MPs. Here are the chairs. We put them aside for them, but not one of those people was available. Cambridge Analytica are already at the centre of a major and growing scandal. No, I never had an agenda, but I had an attitude. And the attitude was that... No, not all that glitters is not gold. So doesn't this make it all the more important to see Mr Gorbachev as soon as possible this year? That's what I'd like. Mr President, we're live on British television news now. I wonder if we could ask you what you see as the most crucial achievement of your period here. I know that you're interested in and indeed actually go along with much of what Mr Enoch Powell has been saying recently. He does not want England to be colonised by Africa. Did we abuse British intelligence? The answer to that question is no. We it don't is a know. Serious... The answer to that question Excuse is me. we do not Excuse know. Me. And the reason we do not know is that there is obfuscation and diversion, part of which we're seeing right here played out before us. As to how that force should use its power, you wouldn't. You've only got to give a moment's thought to it to know that you wouldn't. So you would veto it? I don't veto it. There wouldn't be no good. There'd be no point. You'd never get agreement on rules of engagement. You, you take Mazia Bahari, who, who worked for Newsweek. He gets thrown into jail. He is beaten up in jail. He is tortured in jail. He has told me that himself. And you have accepted his claims. He is a man I have known for a long time. I trust him. We have worked very hard to, on the one hand, support Israel's defense. On the other hand, to try to draw lines on these settlements. But with respect, it's failed. Now, this is my Freedom Pass. This is my senior rail card. I'm in my 60s. I earn a full salary. I work a five-day week. Why are you still allowing people like me to have cards like this? Well, because I made a very clear promise. I suppose the happiest memory of all was meeting Mandela very, very soon after he came out of prison. Coming towards us now is Winnie and Nelson Mandela. Hands in the air. And it was a wonderful extraordinary uplifting experience you know he was as good as they said he was he was you know the human that we all know him to have been so many crimes were committed in the name of apartheid what should happen to people who committed those crimes I have been saying uh, throughout let bygones be bygones That is the second time in two days that we've been pinned down by incoming Iranian fire. Iran is an absolutely fascinating country, a victim of East-West and all that, and a country of enormous beauty and with a population of extraordinary quality. But of course, you know, subjugated to, you know, a fairly intolerant regime. 
this is it. Carrying the Paralympic torch. The last thing in the world I ever thought I'd do. I'm absolutely fascinated by people. I really do love interrogating people about the lives they live, about the problems they suffer, about their hopes, their dreams and the rest. I mean, that, that's the motivation of any journalist, is to find out more about what makes the world a better or worse place. Did you not think it could happen? I never thought in my lifetime that it would happen. But it happened today. It's a reality and we did it. Right, what do you want Obama to do on the first day? Get us out of the war. Get us out of the war. Absolutely. Do you think independence will ever come about? There's a chance it could, but I'd prefer it didn't. A penguin demands a tickle. He's not at risk of catching the virus. Well, yeah, I thought you were going to say, watch his Channel 4 News. I'm going to UCL to study pharmacology. And what did they ask for? AAB. Amazing. And what did we get? A star AB. <laughs> there we are, sir. All done. That was very pleasant. How was it for you? I get very nervous with injections. But it went very smoothly. I at least know more about pop than you do, John. I've seen your collection. <laughs> um, but uh, well, you know. I think I think on that own goal, Bob, I'd, I'd better leave it there. I was terrified. Um, I've never been so afraid in my entire life. Legendary Next to John Snow. That's all I'm saying. No, not that. Camden just, legend. Just it's not that they are not, uh, they do not want education for girls, but then there's that lack of interest for the children of the, for the poor children. Oh, I'm surprised yeah. you've still got it. What? A cappella. I could do that, man. I'm a good singer, me, man. Give me a bar. What do you think you might do after football? <laughs> <laughs> Everyone always asks me this question, but I don't, I don't know. I don't know what. Would you go into politics? No, I'm, I've said from the beginning, like, I'm not a, I don't know anything about politics. This is Jon Snow from Channel 4 News. I'd like to get an interview with anybody from Facebook who's prepared to answer a few questions. I'm back, and in the comfort of this studio, it's hard to imagine I was ever away. I don't need to imagine, though, because what I saw is still etched in my mind. Those people who live in Gaza are mainly, but unbelievably young. If you decide to throw missiles, shells, and the rest, then undoubtedly you will kill children, and that is what they do. One does have to be wary of one's emotions, and I may have been over-emotional in my reporting. I don't know, but I don't regret it. Good evening from West London. That's it, the devastated homes of hundreds of families. We are in Kensington and Chelsea tonight, the richest borough in Great Britain, one of the wealthiest places on earth, Yet in spite of that, last night, a fire ripped through this tower block behind me, spreading rapidly in a way that experts say simply cannot happen. And yet it did. I found it very, very di distressing. And I think one would not be reflecting the truth if you did not confess to that reality. It meant a very great deal to me. More than anything, remain yourself. I had known Mr. Katimbo at the school. Now he's a farmer. Keep your eyes open. Keep your ears open. It wasn't until we were on board this helicopter, looking down over the ground over which it was travelling, that we realised we were looking at the very territory over which we had walked. And keep your emotions alive. My grandfather, my grandmother and my aunt. I'm so sorry. And if you are struck by what you see, you hear or you feel, explore it. That's Channel 4 News. Good evening. Well, the gang's all here to say our goodbyes. Good day, John, from Australia. Look, we all just wanted to say we have learned so much from you over the years, so thank you. We are going to miss you hugely. And it's been a laugh every day and a joy. Well, we've gathered together just a handful of tributes from some of the famous faces you've interviewed in the past, as well as some of the people who perhaps mean the most to you, the viewers. We are all going to miss you. We both once applied, once he got to ITN, for the job of Washington correspondent. And we agreed that whoever got the job would still be friends with the other person. And so we were and have been for many, many years. But most importantly, I then went to Washington and saw how John operated. He went through the office like a whirlwind. Not for him sitting in the office in D.C. 
reporting on the nation's affairs with a piece of camera outside the White House. He wanted to be where the story was every time, every day, every week. So if there was something happening in Tennessee, he would say, I'll get the early morning plane and I'd get back by mid-afternoon and be able to do the news late in the evening. Uh, leaving the presenter role at Channel 4 is going to leave such a big, massive hole there. You are a legend, uh, one of the best journalists of modern times in the UK. Tough interviewer, but also a very fair and very knowledgeable interviewer. But more than any of that, just an all-round uh, gem of a human being. So I hope that uh, leaving the presenter role might give you some more time to spend time here in Scotland. And hopefully it won't be too long until we are conferring upon you honorary citizenship of an independent Scotland. All the best and I hope to see you soon. Jon Snow is a British institution and will always be so. In his interviewing, he's always got to the heart of the issues by being persistent and indeed intrepid. Indeed, I don't recall an interview since 2003 when, and this goes right through to recent times, he has not asked me, and usually not just one question, but many, about the Iraq war. John, your charitable work is less well known, but a tribute to your idealism. You deserve all our thanks for showing us that even amidst evil and injustice in this world, a better world is possible. Um, I know Tories sometimes uh, teased John a little, and um, when he first came to my house to a drinks party, uh, one of my children, then aged about five, ran into the kitchen saying, Nanny, 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 it's the lefty off the telly. Um, but he was always completely fair as an interviewer, which I greatly respected, that he gave uh, his subjects the opportunity to make their points. And from his breadth of knowledge, you also knew you had to be on your toes when being interviewed by John, uh, because he would catch you out if you didn't know what you were talking about. So I think he is really one of the great titans of television. In a day and age where so many people are being reticent to believe in the news, reporters like him uh, make you feel safe. For his ties and his socks and his honest and fair journalism. I actually think that he engaged young people into global news as well. Um, and so since then I've enjoyed watching Krishnan and Gurumurthy and everyone else, so yeah, Jon Snow's great and we need more like him. I like Jon Snow because he asked difficult questions and uh, he didn't take silly answers um, uh, the way that a lot of them do and he, he persisted. I think he's got a younger outlook, a more diverse and more inclusive outlook than a lot of the younger people and I think a lot of them could learn a lot from him on television craft in general. I think he's absolutely tremendous and I think he's such a loss and I can't think of anyone comparable to replace him. I absolutely love you, mate. You have been there through thick and through thin, our best times and our worst times. You've been such a pro, always so stylish, always so stylish. And it's not just me that loves you. Look, here's our crew. We love you. John, it's been an honour and a pleasure to be your editor and for all of your colleagues to work alongside you. Uh, you're a giant of a journalist, uh, but you're a very humble man uh, and a very beautiful one as well. We'll miss you and we love you very much. Good luck.